But can you tell me about this? Oh my gosh, it's alive. It's here. Oh my god. Oh, no. Okay, that was good footage. Oh my gosh. So what is y'all's focus area this year? Like if you had to say at Canyon Ridge, we are, what are We're we doing this year? focusing on connections okay. and in some ways getting back to the basics. What's it like to be back in school? What's it like to be back teaching a full classroom full of kids and for students to be back around a full classroom full of kids? <laughs> this is eighth grade social studies. Eighth grade, so it's U.S. history? <laughs> All right. So, so, so you are a settler? Yes. In the United States? In one of the 13 colonies. And which colony did you choose to settle? I chose Plymouth because it's in the New England colony. Students have moved on to the project, um, which is the colonial postcards. Yes, and I love that they're trading them. Yes, yeah, so they're actually <laughs> corresponding with one another. Mm -hmm. And that way we introduce some vocab too, because the correspondence is going to come in in our next unit when we talk about the committees of correspondence right. in the American Revolution. So you're going to send a letter to his colony, and then your colony is going to respond to his? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Y'all have a dialogue then going. Yeah. They're getting some vocab, they're learning about the regions, and they're um, exchanging knowledge with each other when they switch their postcards. I love that. And how many of them didn't even know what a postcard was? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the idea of correspondence, I just say, it's kind of like texting. Right? <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about deeper learning, because that's something we've been talking about at the board level. How do we do that deeper learning mastery level? And you were explaining about how the teacher kind of scaffolds, right? Yeah, she does a great job with that. She starts, um, when they do activities, they start with a mastery check. And if the student has it, then they go on to the next thing. If they don't, they work on small group, reteach, whatever they need to make sure they have that skill before they go on. So she's truly meeting the needs of the kids of exactly where they're at. Love it. So if I already have that material mastered, then I'm able to keep going. Correct. So everybody in there that was already working on their postcard had already done their mastery check and shown they had the concept before they go on to that next level skill. It's a pretty library. Thank you. We've been working on it. The kids love coming in here and picking out books. They're constantly huge flow in here all the time. So you're averaging how many right now? I say about 750 to 800 students a week, including our mornings, um, still controlling with COVID yeah. limitations, but it's great. Um, we're just counting heads and they're filling up the space immediately before and yeah. after school too. Awesome. So the numbers, what are the numbers for on each of the tables? That's so I can seat them two per table. Okay. So when we have large classes, I have little overflow tables and that way we're keeping them spread out and they know where to sit when they come, and then they enjoy the space, and we have them play games in the mornings. That's what I was noticing, too. You have some games over there. My yes. son was actually mentioning yeah. that you can do chess in the library. Yes, so yes. Getting them to do teamwork here, and yeah. then moving yeah. on They're, into the yes. projects and the research we do A lot of social-emotional learning, though, going on, too, just getting connected with each other. Mm -hmm. We've been practicing that at the tables. I'll have them stop, and we'll do a talk to one another, do reflective listening on what you just talked about, asked two questions to that person, and then you may respond back. Just kind of getting everybody back used to talking with each other, too. That's what Wendy was sharing earlier, that the theme this year is just kind of that connecting and reconnecting. So I love to see that it's also in our library, not just in the mm -hmm. academic yes. classrooms, but also here in our other learning spaces. And just like eighth grade social studies talked about, too, you know, putting that pen to paper. Um, sixth grade ELA was sharing with me yesterday. They've been on the computer so much. Some of them are like, oh, you want me to pick up a pen and write? <laughs> yes, not just type. So. It's teach, you know, it's re going back over those skills that they haven't maybe used in a while. Now, I heard on recess yesterday that your kids know some hand signals to know this right. science unit, and I need to see these hand signals. Sounds good. Children, lights are red. Go ahead and stand up doing hand motions. Begin. Cell membrane. Let's change in and out. Chloroplast. Good job. Yay! Good job. Awesome. Good job. All right, back to your choice board. Your practice is paying <laughs> off. Good job. Yes. So the lights is a classroom management technique. So the kids know if it's a certain color, that's what they're doing at that time. So if it turns to red, that means it's time for direct teach, eyes on the teacher. And we're putting aside whatever we were working on. And then if it goes to, I think it's kind of a light blue then they know they're doing independent work time. And then there's other colors for group time and interaction and things like that. So it really helps them have that visual of what are we supposed to be doing right now? Yes. 
So this is our PE Pals class. Okay. So it's a combination of adaptive PE, which we love being able to meet the needs of our students. Yes. And then we also have some of our athletes who sign up to be an aide or a PE Pal, and they work with the students to help them with their PE skills. Awesome. Can you all tell us what it's like to be a PE Pal? Um, every day we get in here and we hang out with the kids until it's time to start class and then we work on their locomotive skills like running, skipping, galloping, and then we do a fun activity with them after we warm up. So of all the classes in middle school you could have chosen, you chose this one. I'm curious yes. why. Yes. Um, I chose PE Pals because my brother was in it when he was in eighth grade and he absolutely loved it, getting to know the kids and getting just to be in this environment with all of them, so I thought I'd take a turn. Basically the same. like. Just being with them, like, I don't know, it just makes my day better. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that, too. Thank you. Can I ask y'all, uh, as y'all participate in this, do you think this is something you're going to want to do when you get to high school? Has this helped you figure out if this is what you want to continue, or...? Yes, I chose this class because, like, I love, I have um, a couple cousins who are, all, all, like, they have um, disabilities, and so I chose this class to, like, be able to, like, understand them and learn more about them so I can help my cousins and maybe one day do this as a career. That's my favorite part. And so are you all almost done with your lunch period? Yeah. Okay, you're going to stay out here and just kind of enjoy the fresh air? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good to see you guys. This is reality. Yeah. Children in buildings learning, teachers, our amazing staff, like this is, this is why we're here.